4.1, Theme 4, Sports and Leisure. Lesson 4.1, Vocabulary for Listening. Competitive or non-competitive? Exercise B. Listen to a text. Number the words in the order that you hear them. Why is physical education, or PE, compulsory in most schools? All around the world, secondary schools have two or three hours a week for some kind of physical activity. At one time, children played team games in these periods, like football or rugby. These games are competitive. In other words, there is usually a winner and a loser. According to the theory, children learn two main things from competitive sports. Firstly, they learn to cooperate with other people. Secondly, they learn to be good losers and good winners. But ideas in education have changed, and nowadays many schools use PE periods to do non-competitive activities such as dance, aerobics or trampolining. Children also go swimming in PE lessons without taking part in races. PE teachers say that all children can do these activities and enjoy them, not just the sporty ones. Four point two Exercise C two Listen to some sentences, check your ideas. One Can you play football? Two We don't have competitive sports now. We do dance. Three I don't know how to play rugby. Four All of the children go swimming once a week. 5. Some schools are doing aerobics now instead of team sports. 6. I like watching basketball, but I don't like playing it. 7. At one time I went cycling every weekend, but not now. 4.2 Lesson 4.2 Real-time listening, racing, opponent, and achievement sports. Exercise A2. Listen. Number the sports in the order that you hear them. 1. These children have just finished a swimming race. 2. These boys are playing basketball. One team has just scored. 3. These boys are rowing. They are moving very fast through the water. 4. These children are playing table tennis. It is a very fast game. 5. These children are starting a running race. It is probably a short race, a sprint. 6. This woman has just cleared the bar in the high jump. 7. This man is about to throw the discus. The sport is very old. 8. The woman is about to throw the javelin. The sport began in ancient times. 9. The girls are learning karate. It is a form of fighting. 4.4 4. Today I'm going to talk about sports. As you know, there are many different sports, but it is possible to classify them into groups. The verb classify comes from the noun class. So classifying means putting things into classes or groups. So, first today, I'm going to classify sports into three groups and then give examples of each type. Then I'm going to explain the reason for classification. Why do we classify sports in physical education training? Four point five. Okay, so first, classification. There are three groups of sports. The first group consists of racing sports. Racing, of course, means trying to go faster than another person. 
The second group is opponent sports. An opponent is someone you play against. Finally, there are achievement sports. Achievement means reaching a certain level, a good level. So, we've seen that sports can be classified into three groups. Now, what sort of sports go into each category or group? Let's look at the first group, racing, trying to go faster than another person. There are two subcategories here. Some racing sports just use the power of the human body, for example, running and swimming. Other sports in this category use the power of machines. Cycling uses bicycles. Motor racing uses cars, for example. What about the second group, opponent sports? Once again, with opponent sports, there are two subcategories. The opponent might be an individual or a team. For example, we usually play tennis against one person, but we play football against a team. Finally, let's turn to achievement sports. In achievement sports, there are also two subcategories. Sometimes we try to reach a target. For example, in golf, we try to get a white ball into a small hole. So that's a target sport. Sometimes we try to achieve a particular quantity, distance, for example, or height. In the long jump, we try to jump farther than all the other people. In the high jump, we try to jump higher. Okay, so to sum up, we have heard about three categories of sports, racing, opponent, and achievement. We have seen that each category has two subcategories. In racing, it's human body and machine. In opponent sports, it's a person or team. And in achievement sports, it's target or quantity. Okay, I hope you have understood the classification. But why do we classify sports in this way in physical education training? Well, each type of sport teaches a child something different. Racing sports teach children to rely on themselves, to try harder, even if they are feeling physical pain. Opponent sports teach children to react more quickly and to think about the actions of another person. Achievement sports teach children to reach for a target, something which is hard to achieve but achievable. Next week, we're gonna look at ball games in detail. Four point six. Exercise E two. Listen and check. Against. Ball. Class. Classify. Classification. Herd. Quantity. Racing. Reach. Target. Team. Table. Four point seven. Lesson four point three. Learning new listening skills, branching diagrams. Exercise A: Listen to some sentences. Tick the best way to complete each sentence. One, as you. Two, there are many different. Three, but it is possible to classify. Four. We can classify sports into three. Five. Firstly, there are racing sports. Racing, of course, means trying to go faster than another. Six. For example, racing sports include running and. Seven. The second group of sports is opponent sports. In an opponent sport, you play against an individual or a. Eight, for example, tennis is an opponent sport, and so is. Nine, finally, there are achievement sports. In achievement sports, you try to reach a certain. Ten, the high jump is an achievement sport, and so is the long. Four 
4.8. Exercise B1. Listen to the start of a lecture about sports. I'm going to talk to you today about sports. I'm going to start by classifying sports into three categories. The first group consists of racing sports. Racing, of course, means trying to go faster than another person. The second group is opponent sports. An opponent is someone you play against. Finally, there are achievement sports. Achievement means reaching a certain level, a good level. Four point nine, exercise B four. Listen to the start of some more lectures on different subjects. Organize your notes in each case. Today we are looking at the classification of literature. There are four main kinds of literature. Firstly, we have novels. Secondly, plays. Thirdly, poetry. And finally, of course, biography or autobiography. Firstly, in this lecture, I want to classify the mass media. I'm going to divide it into two categories. On the one hand, there is the broadcast media. On the other hand, we have the print media. Of course, we can subdivide each of these categories. Broadcast media has three subcategories. It consists of television, radio, and nowadays the internet. Print media contains newspapers and magazines. We are going to look at elements in this lecture. Elements are the basic building blocks of our world. Carbon is an element. Hydrogen is an element. Oxygen is an element. But how can we classify elements? There are over one hundred elements, but we can classify all elements into just three groups. The first group is metals. The second group is non-metals, and the third group is gases, but not all gases, only inert gases. That's I N E R T. It means they don't change. Let's think of a few examples of each category. Iron is a metal. Zinc is a metal. Carbon is a non-metal. Hydrogen and oxygen are gases, but they are not inert, so they are non-metals. Inert gases include helium, with the symbol H E. You find helium in balloons. We can classify all living things into five categories. The categories are called kingdoms. In the first kingdom are animals. In the second kingdom we have plants. The third kingdom consists of fungi. The animal kingdom can be subdivided into many categories. But I'm only going to talk about four: mammals, birds, fish, and reptiles. There are many examples of mammals, of course. We are mammals, humans. Bats are mammals. Whales are mammals, although some people think they are fish. Four point ten. Exercise C two. Listen and tick the correct column. Alone. Although. Flower. Most. Mountain. Opponent. Power. Smoke. CD three. Four point eleven. Lesson four point four. Grammar for listening. Prepositions after the verb. Exercise A one. Listen and number the verb plus preposition phrases. One. Today we're going to look at types of literature. Two. Children must learn to rely on themselves. Three. Okay. So to sum up the problems. Four. 
I'm going to mention a few points and I'd like you to write down the most important one in your opinion. 5. First of all, we're going to hear about racing sports. 6. Children should try to reach for a target. 7. I don't want to go into detail here. 8. The spacecraft took off at 10.32 a.m. precisely. 9. Remove the old printer cartridge and put in the new one. 10. Traditional festivals are dying out all over the world. Four point twelve. Exercise A two. Listen to some more verb plus preposition phrases. These verbs are probably new to you. Can you hear the preposition in each case? Number the prepositions. One. Come about. Two. Act for. Three. Box in. Four. Look into. 5. Fly at. 6. Put off. 7. Let on. 8. Work out. 9. Climb down. 10. Set up. Four point thirteen, exercise B. Listen to the start of some sentences. Choose the correct phrase to complete each sentence. One. First, we're going to look at. Two. You can look up. Three. It is difficult to look after. Four. Okay, let's look back. 5. People look forward. 6. Researchers look for... 4.14. Lesson 4.5. Applying new listening skills. Classifying ball games. Exercise B2. Listen. Which game is the speaker talking about? 1. People say that the game began at a British school. The children were playing football. Suddenly, one of the boys picked up the ball and ran with it. 2. This is a team game with five players on each side. You try to put the ball into a net with your hands. 3. You can play singles or doubles. You use a special bat with strings. 4. This is one of the oldest games in the world. People started kicking balls in China over 2,000 years ago. 5. Many people do not understand this game. It can last five days. You must try to stop the ball hitting three pieces of wood. You can only use your bat. 6. You need two teams of three players each for this game. You can only use your hands to touch the ball. 7. This is a target sport. You try to hit the ball into a hole with a long stick called a club. 8. This game is very popular in the USA and Japan. The batters try to hit the ball a long way with a long bat called a bat. 4.15 Today I'm going to talk about ball games. As you know, there are many different ball games, but it is possible to classify them into three groups. The first group contains games played mainly with the hands. The second group consists of games played mainly with the feet. Thirdly, there are bat sports, sports played with some kind of bat, stick, or racket. So. 
I'm going to classify sports into three groups and give examples of sports in each category or group. Finally, I'm going to look at the importance of classifying ball games for physical education. Okay, so first, classification. As I said, ball games can be put into three groups. Let's look at the first group, hand sports. There are two subcategories of hand sports. Firstly, there are sports where you can only use the hand. Basketball goes into this category. Secondly, there are sports where you can use the hand or another part of your body, usually your foot. Rugby fits into this category. Now, let's turn to the second group. Sports played with the feet. Actually, there is only one major sport in this category. It's called football, of course. Players can use their heads, but only one player can use hands in this sport, the goalkeeper. It is against the rules for any other player to touch the ball with their hands. Finally, there are bat sports, sports played with a bat. In bat sports, you are only allowed to use the bat to hit the ball. It is against the rules to use your hands or your feet, for example. Of course, the bat has different names in different sports. For example, in tennis, the bat is called a racket. The word comes from Arabic rahat al-yad, meaning the palm or inside of the hand. So perhaps at one time, players could use their hands in tennis, but not now. In golf, the bat is called a club. In ice hockey, it is called a stick. Four point sixteen, lesson four point seven, real time speaking, ball games for PE. Okay, so we have heard about three categories of ball games: hand sports, foot sports, and bat sports. Why is it important to classify ball games? Because at school we must teach children to play at least one game in each category. This helps to build up their physical strength, but also their physical ability. Let's go into this point in detail. Young children often seem clumsy. They bang into things and knock over things. They can't balance on things well. Many children cannot work out the bounce of a ball. Why? Because children don't have coordination. They cannot move different parts of their body in the correct way to throw a ball, for example, or to kick one. Ball games help to develop coordination. Let's look at three groups again. How does each group of sports help coordination? Well, firstly, a hand sports develops the coordination between the hand and the eye. With a second group, a foot sport, of course, improves coordination between the foot and the eye. It also improves balance because you have to balance on one foot to kick the ball with the other leg. Finally, bat sports. Bat sports help children to deal with a tool. They have to use the tool to hit the ball instead of a part of their own body. Bat sports involve coordination again. But this time, it is coordination with an extension of the body. To sum up, then, ball games are fun, but we don't teach them at schools just because they are fun. We teach them to develop physical ability, especially coordination. Before next time, think of ten more ball games and classify each one into one of the categories from today's lecture.